coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Epic Aircraft begins E-1000 deliveries. All electric Cessna 208B Grand Caravan makes its first flight. And a Russian pilot's unsafe flying endangers a U.S. Navy P-8A aircraft. Happy Monday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. Epic Aircraft completed delivery of its first two E-1000 all-composite single-engine turboprop aircraft, following the successful conclusion of its FAA type certification program last year. Completing these deliveries is a tremendous milestone for our company and our customers. The E-1000 is a remarkable aircraft, and seeing the enthusiasm of our owners as they take delivery is extremely gratifying. This is a successful culmination of eight years of hard work, extensive investment, and a passionate belief in our product, said Doug King, CEO of Epic. The first customer aircraft delivered in February is being leased back to Epic to support several priority engineering projects. The second aircraft was delivered to its owner last week after experiencing several delays related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Powered by the Pratt & Whitney 1200 horsepower PT-6A 67A, the all-carbon fiber E-1000 cruises over 330 knots, climbs at 4,000 feet per minute, offers a full fuel payload of nearly 1,100 pounds with coast-to-coast -coast coverage on one fuel stop, and is RVSM certified to 34,000 feet. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Like most of you, we're still working from home. We miss being around pilots. But the most important thing right now is to mitigate your risks and use this time productively while we all get through this. Folks, King Schools is open and we're 100% operational. We're making sure that your courses work and are available for you 24-7. We look forward to the time when we can see you again at the airport. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. On May 16th, amphibious transport dock ship USS Portland successfully disabled an unmanned aerial vehicle with a solid-state laser technology maturation laser weapon system demonstrator. LWSD is a high-energy laser weapon system demonstrator developed by the Office of Naval Research. LWSD's operational employment on a Pacific Fleet ship is the first system-level implementation of a high-energy class solid-state laser. Virgin Orbit has filed additional details following their first unsuccessful attempt at an airborne rocket launch. The company stated, about nine seconds after drop, something malfunctioned, causing the booster stage engine to extinguish, which in turn ended the mission. We cannot yet say conclusively what the malfunction was or what caused it, but we feel confident we have sufficient data to determine that as we continue through the rigorous investigation, we've already begun. With the engine extinguished, the vehicle was no longer able to maintain controlled flight, but the rocket did not explode. Genesis Aerosystems and XP Services have commenced certification flight testing, reportedly the final phase in the certification process of the Genesis Avionics Suite for the UH-60A and EH-60A Blackhawk. After months of ground and flight testing, XP Services and Genesis Aerosystems are jointly testing the final version of the cockpit architecture to achieve the FAA STC this summer. The Mississippi Wing of the Commemorative Air Force acquired a PT-19, which was built in 1943 during World War II. Although the aircraft was brought to the wing from Nacogdoches, Texas during the war, the aircraft was stationed in Meridian, Mississippi. CAF pilot Carl Holacombe had the honor to fly it home to Mississippi this month. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, 
Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrel is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Magniax and Aerotech have completed a successful flight of an all-electric Cessna Grand Caravan 208B. The successful flight of the E-Caravan, magnified by a 750 horsepower Magni 500 propulsion system, took place at the Aerotech Flight Test Center at the Grant County International Airport in Moses Lake, Washington last Thursday morning. The flying of the E-Caravan serves as another critical step in the certification and approval process of the Magni 500 propulsion system. I'm proud of the pioneering work performed by our engineers, technicians, and flight test team. There's no roadmap for testing and certifying electric aircraft. This is a new frontier, and Aerotech is on the front lines developing the processes and best practices that will pave the way for electric aviation, stated Lee Human president and CEO of Aerotech. The aircraft is allegedly the world's largest all-electric commercial aircraft. For the third time in two months, Russian pilots flew in an unsafe and unprofessional manner while intercepting a U.S. Navy P-8A maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft in the U.S. 6th Fleet. On May 26, a U.S. Navy P-8A aircraft was flying in the eastern Mediterranean over international waters and was intercepted by two Russian Su-35 aircraft over a period of 65 minutes. The intercept was determined to be unsafe and unprofessional due to the Russian pilots taking close station on each wing of the P-8A, simultaneously restricting the P-8A's ability to safely maneuver. The unnecessary actions of the Russian Su-35 pilots were inconsistent with good airmanship and international flight rules and jeopardized the safety of flight of both aircraft. While the Russian aircraft was operating in international airspace, they are expected to operate within international standards set to ensure safety and to prevent incidents, including the 1972 Agreement for the Prevention of Incidents on and Over the High Sea. This incident follows two unsafe interactions in April over the same waters. And that was our last story of the day. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more aviation and aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Wednesday.